This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Well, today we're going to do a request video and the request was can you do a tutorial on a slightly more complex object and uh, show how to UV that, okay? So we're going to do a moonshine jug, we're going to model that, we're going to UV it and we're going to texture it. So a complete video, okay? So before we dive into that, um, kind of an announcement or something that I want to ask you guys. Um, recently I had a discussion in the uh, Facebook group uh, for MS Tutorials, the Hangout group if you will. And uh, you can find details below if you want to join that. Uh, on how to get a kind of complete database of favorites related to favorite books used by 3D animators and modelers, favorite DVDs, hardware, software and so on. Okay. So what I did is I set up an Amazon shop and I put links in the shop to all these items. So my question to you is, can you please email me your favorites? What is your absolute favorite book, DVD, hardware, software, the mouse you use, the monitor you use and so forth. And I will put that all together in that shop. You can use it as a reference. Uh, obviously you don't have to buy anything there, but if you do, uh, I'll get a small kickback from Amazon and that will help me to uh, continue making these videos, okay? So uh, that said, let's jump into the video and uh, get on with the tutorial, here we go. Okay guys, here we go. So, um, a moonshine jug, okay? Well, I'm not going to use a reference, um, so I'm just going to do it by heart and let's see what we come up with. All right. So I'm going to start with a uh, polygon cylinder. I'm going to control A for the attribute editor. Go in and set my poly count subdivision to 12 to keep it fairly low poly. I'll set the caps to zero, which for now will create an n-gon, but we'll fix that later. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom here hit control E to extrude, R to scale in, like so, G to repeat the last command, W to pull up, G to repeat last command again, R to scale in again, and W to pull up once again. Something like that, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, get rid of that, we're gonna right click go to edge, double click on the entire edge, control E to extrude, R to scale in, and this is gonna go in something like that, okay? We're gonna G to repeat last command, W to push down just slightly, G to repeat last command, R to scale in again, not too much, G to repeat, W to pull up, and from there, we're going to start to create kind of a dome shape, okay? So, and we're going to eyeball that, which is always fun. So I just pull that up, G to repeat last command, W to pull up, and R to scale in. G to repeat, W to pull up, R to scale in, and try to keep that even spacing wise. G and W, pull that up, and R, scale that in, G, W, pull that up, and R to scale in, G, W, and R to scale in, once again, this one we're going to bring down a bit, G to repeat, W to pull up, and R to scale in, G to repeat, W to pull up, and R to scale in one last time, and then G to repeat, and W to pull straight up, and maybe that is too narrow, let's see, G to repeat, R to scale out, and G to repeat, W to pull up, and G to repeat, and R to scale in. Okay, we'll have a look once it's um, all smoothed out. But for now, we need to make sure that we're not able to look into the flask here. So we're going to take that. We're going to 
gonna do is we're gonna hit Control E to extrude, W to push down, and then we'll hit G to repeat, R to scale out, G to repeat, and W to push in. Okay, like so. Now we are going to put something on top of it, but for now, just so we're sure that we're okay there. I'm gonna do a quick preview smooth. So I'm gonna hit it in object mode and I'm gonna hit three. Okay, and you can see that we need some subdivision in some areas just to make it look better. So we're gonna hit one to go back. We're gonna to go to insert edge loop. Now these edges are gonna be fairly hard. So we're gonna bring them in there. And then on the top here as well. The others not so much, with the exception of here. So we're gonna add a few there. And I'll do one in here as well. And that should be good. We're gonna right click at object mode, three to preview smooth. So for the basic shape, that's not bad. Uh, we do need to have something to hold our jug, okay? So we're gonna hit one to go back, and we're gonna have to decide where we want to put that, okay? And let's see, what we'll do is, we need to keep that spacing fairly even, but we'll work that out, it shouldn't be a problem. And I want it to go from somewhere around here to around there, okay? So I'm gonna take this face right here, just see if that lines up a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. And then we'll take the one down here and we're gonna delete both of them. Okay, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna right click at an edge, double click on that entire edge row and shift double click on this entire edge row. And we're gonna go to Edit Mesh, and we're gonna go to Bridge, hit the Option box. I want a smooth path with a curve. I want it to be automatic, and we'll start with a division level of, let's do 20, okay? And we're just simply gonna hit Bridge. It went in the wrong direction, which is never good, so it controls you to go back. Not quite sure why that happened. And to be quite honest, I've never seen that happen ever before, so it's kind of cool. Uh, so let's see what the deal is there. Where'd he go? Hmm. Let's see, taper, twist. Just give me a sec to figure this out, guys. Be back in a second. Okay, guys. Um, it was the direction thing here, okay? So I'm just gonna reset this. Then I'm gonna go to smooth path and curve. That's what I want. I don't want the automatic direction. Normally that works fine, but in this case it doesn't for some reason. So I'm gonna go to custom. And I'm gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna set the subdivision level to 20, and we will have to tweak this once it's created, but let's start with this, okay? So let's hit apply. Now you can see that it's, it's quite thick. Um, that's obviously related to the position of where we have our edges. Uh, let's do a quick preview smooth. And I'm not unhappy with that at all, actually. So what we'll do is we'll accept that and we'll tweak that, okay? So I'm just gonna close this out. And let's see, the best way is probably to do that while it's smooth. So with that selected, I'm gonna go to mesh and smooth to actually smooth it. I'm not gonna go nuts on the subdivision, so we'll uh, keep it at that, I think that's okay. We will need to deal with some end guns. It's still quite clunky, don't like that. So I'm just gonna have to go with a little higher subdivision level here. And if you want to use this for a, for a game or whatnot, you will use this as your high poly and then project that on a low poly, okay? I'll even go with three here. Just because I want it to have a nice 
look and feel to it. A little bit of issue there. So we'll just go back a few steps and fix that. All right. I'm going to right click get a vertex, take that vertex and hit W and kind of move that in a little bit. And the same here. Hit four for wireframe mode, make sure I'm not selecting anything else. That looks all right. Five for shaded mode. Let's go to object mode and hit three to preview smooth. It's not bad. And then let's uh, just uh, deal with that thickness just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to right click, go to edge and double click on that edge and that edge. Hit B to smooth, hit R to push together and double click on this guy and go to world orientation. Let's uh, decrease my B range. Looks to be quite large. Just hold down your left mouse and B and drag that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, it's cool live with that and then we're going to take this and we're going to hit W and we're going to kind of use that as a lattice I'll just hit B and increase that just a little bit turn B off I'm perfectly happy with that Okay, so what I'm going to do next is, uh, let's see, yeah, what I'll do next is uh, UV this guy. First, make sure we have no end guns. I don't think we do, but I'm going to go to mesh and clean up and check it. Uh, yeah, okay, hit apply. No, we're good. So what we're going to do next is we're going to UV this guy. So I'm going to go to UV and we'll do a cylindrical projection, which is perfect. Then we're going to go to UV and UV editor and let's see what we got here. Okay. So we're going to need to cut a few things. And what we'll do is we'll go to edge. And let's see if it's going around correctly or not. Okay, I got that one. I'm going to go to cut UV edges. And here again, cut UV edges, and then we'll do a seam in here. We'll take that, cut UV edges. Let's see what we got here. We got this shell. Let's move it out of the way. We got that. And let's do an unfold. Okay, fairly clean. It's going to have one universal uh, material on it, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Then what we'll do is I'm going to cut the UV up here. So I'm going to go to edge once again. We'll do that one. Okay, so let's uh, cut UV there. And then I'll take one of these. Best to do it close to this area, but it's not going to select that one. So we'll do that. And we'll do cut UVs again. So now if we've got a shell, 
We got this. We got this. Okay, I'm gonna select all of it. I'm gonna go to unfold just so I can see what's what. Okay, and then we can see where we need additional cuts and where we need to uh, stitch and so forth. Okay, all right. So let's see, we got this guy, which is part of our jug. So we're gonna right click, go to edge, drag select this. And we're going to go to move and sew. We'll select it and go to unfold again. Okay, and we will need to do some work there. Then we got part of the top. That's our handle. Okay, so that's going to go over there. These two need to be connected. I'm going to go to edge, select this area, and go to move and sew. Then we're going to select the whole thing and go to unfold. Right click at the edge. We're going to take these edges. Move and sew. Move and sew. Select it again. Unfold. It's starting to look better. Not quite there yet. What we're going to do here is we're going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, we're going to take this. We're going to cut over this edge and cut the UV edge. And then we're going to stitch these edges. So it's going to go to the other side. We're going to take these. Move and so we'll take these. So that's all that. We got one here, it looks like. All right. So we're going to get a shell. We got this guy, which shouldn't be attached to that guy. So we're going to go to edge, let's do this one, cut the UV edge, all right, so this is the top part there and we are going to unfold once again, then this is our handle, that's fine, this guy we need to cut the bottom circle on that one. So I'm gonna right click at an edge and we'll do this one right here. And we'll cut that. Take a shell and take that. Now that one clearly needs some help. Okay, so we're gonna right click at an edge. Let's see. We'll Connect that, move and so, right click shell, unfold, that's this guy, edges, move and so, right click shell, go to unfold again, take these edges. Move and sew, right click shell, unfold. Let's see. This looks to be almost clean. We've got one here, edge, move and sew. Okay, so we've got the bottom circle there, that's that. We got our surrounding. A wrap around, if you will, which is that. We got the top part and we got the handle. Okay, so let's drag, select all of that stuff and go to uh, layout. There we go. And that looks all right. Okay, so now that our jug is UV'd, what we're going to do is we're going to export this. 
so we can texture it in Substance Painter, right? So I'm going to drag select the whole thing. I'm going to go to File, Export Selection, Option Box, OBJ, yeah, that's fine. Let's see. And I'll just call this uh, Jug. Yeah, that's fine. And what I'll do is I'll just make sure I got a nice folder for this. And I'll call it Moonshine. Jug OBJ. And export selection. There we go. Okay, so next up is Substance Painter. Here we go. Forgot one little thing, guys. Uh, before we jump in, uh, I need to do a quick uh, color ID map. Uh, I don't necessarily have to. You can do that based on polygon selection in Substance Painter as well. But I just uh, prefer it that way. So I'm going to right click, go to face, and select this row. Hit shift period to increase that selection. And now we got all the bottom stuff here, and let's see how far we got this. So it looks like we need to add a little bit to that. So we'll take this row as well. Not that. We'll hit four for wireframe mode. So, we, ugh, no, no, I'm not. Okay, that's fine. And I'm going to right click Assign New Material and I'll do a uh, Lambert. And we'll just give that a color. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just because we only have two materials in this model, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Okay, so now I'm going to export it again and I'll see you guys in Substance Painter. Here we go. Alright guys, we're in Substance Painter and it's uh, time to uh, load up our uh, model for our uh, Moonshine Jug. So we're going to go to File, New. Uh, we're going to leave this at PBR Metal Rough and I'm going to select my uh, model right here. There we go. Hit Open. I'm going to leave that at DirectX. I'm going to set this to a map size of 2K. I haven't created any maps just yet, so there's nothing to load up here. I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, there is our model. All right. Now, what we need to do first is bake the default maps. So I'm going to go down here to Bake Textures, and I'm just going to hit that. I'm going to leave all of them selected and just hit Bake All Texture Sets. It's going to give some error messages because, you know, you can't select them all if you don't have all the information, but that's fine. Later on, I can choose which one I want to use. Okay. So while that is baking, there we go. Almost done. Okay, we can go back to our shelf like so. And now we have our jug set up. Down here we have our maps that have been created. And up here we have the two different materials that I created in Maya because I added one red uh, Lambert and one default Lambert. Okay, so let's start with the top part of our jug. So I got this selected and not only is this little round thing selected, but make sure you're here as well. Okay, then we're going to go into the smart materials. I'm going to use a copper and let's see, we'll use a worn copper material. Okay, so I'm just going to drag that onto my uh, layer here and it's going to be applied as you can see. And this is what he came up with. And I just want to make this a little bit more dirty, if you will. Okay. So I'm going to open up this folder down here and we have the worn surface. I'm going to take that slider for the roughness and increase that a little bit, which will decrease the level of shine, which is uh, good. And then uh, let's see the dirt level. It doesn't always respond to the extent that I would like. It's hardly noticeable actually. Uh, but what I will do is I'll take my base material and uh, I'll tweak that a little bit. And I want to have the color be a bit more reddish, I, I guess. Yeah. Okay. 
So I'm uh, liking that. Okay, let's go to the bottom section. So we click on this guy, turn that one off. And as I said, make sure you have this selected as well. Otherwise you're gonna be working here. There we go. And there I want to use the uh, red cover. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag that in. We'll give that a sec as it uh, gets applied to our model. Shouldn't take too long. All right. Now, all in all, as a default, it doesn't look too bad. It's a bit too clean. So let's open that up and let's see what we can change here. Uh, for example, edge damage. Let's uh, bump that up a bit. Okay. This thing has been lying around, uh, you know, in the in the forest or in the swamp or whatever. So let's just see. Well, yeah. We'll make that nice and rough. There we go. Let's have a look here. Then surface details. Let's tweak that as well. As you can see, it's nice and rough, which is good. Let's see again the dirt level. Uh, not quite sure whether that will be a great effect. Here's our metallic slider. No, I'm not going to tweak that either. Okay, so this is good. Let's see. We got this one done. We got that one done. Uh, the base metal again. You can decide whether you want to tweak that color a bit if you like. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay, so we're going to turn both layers on. And one more thing you can do if you like is just to identify it as moonshine. We're going to apply the uh, triple X onto the jug. So for that, uh, let's see, we're going to do that on this guy right here. It's selected. We're going to add a new layer like so. And then in that layer, we're going to make sure we got a couple of things. First, we need a brush. So let's go with our default. And this is a hard brush. So let's do the soft one like so. Uh, let's see, we have a, uh, an alpha selected and the material that we're painting with right now is probably white. There we go. So let's bring that towards black. And let's check the size. That's kind of okay, but we'll go back up and we'll increase the size just a bit. Yeah, like so. And then we need to decide whether we want the height to be affected. Now, I don't really think that would be realistic, so we're not going to do that. And I'm just going to kind of add those markers here and try to do it in a way that it doesn't look too, um, I don't know, try to make it look a little bit man-made, if you know what I mean. Okay. And normally, if you've got a jar with three X's on it, people will know that, you know, it's moonshine. All right. So this is pretty much our uh, jug here. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's see. I'm thinking that this is a little bit too reflective. So let's see if we can do anything about that. We're going to go to our base metal. And let's bring down that metallic value like so and then because of that we'll make this quite a bit darker not too much otherwise you're not going to see our markings and it's it's all personal preference obviously but yeah we'll go with this okay so there you go. Now, one question that I get a lot is, okay, so how do I get these textures into Keyshot or Maya or, or in Game Engine or whatnot? What you can do is right click on your model and you go to, uh, where do you go? To, let's try that again. Right click, hey, where do you go, where do you go? Export textures, right there, okay? And when you do that, you select the folder, it will um, copy all the texture files out. And then what you need to do 
is figure out, okay, so what goes where? Now, depending on the software that you're using, I recently did a video on Keyshot, uh, but if you've got game engines, uh, Unity or Unreal, you need to decide and figure out what uh, map goes into what slot, okay? So that's uh, pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.